Hello viewers, welcome back to this new episode on script writing. This is episode number 27 and in this particular episode we will discuss uh, how to write scripts for a television soap or television uh, uh, you know, fiction series. So we have with us in the studio two students very passionate about filmmaking, Abhishek Bhadra who has just completed semester 6 in media science from Elite College Kolkata and Shayantun Mukherjee who has just completed semester 4 in media science from Elite College. Before writing a script for uh, soaps and serials, you have to have a basic understanding of the medium of television. Okay, because television is a medium which is in many ways it's similar to cinema because it's an audiovisual medium. But it, in many ways it's very, very different from cinema and that is something you have to have some clarity on before you start writing anything for uh, television. First thing is how do we watch a movie uh, in a movie hall and how do we watch a movie or how do you watch anything on television. Now when we go to a movie hall, we, uh, you know, pay, we, we buy the ticket, we enter the dark movie hall and all our attention is on the screen, whatever is happening in front of us on the screen. So we give, give our full attention to it and there is no distraction. All right, and the images that come on the screen are larger than life. They are very good quality images, larger than life, they are hypnotic and we are drawn into the world of the cinema. Whereas when we are watching television, it is on a small screen which is usually in your living room and the lights are on, uh, people are working, maybe the calling bell is ringing and the, uh, in other corner of the house the pump is running, so all kinds of sounds, all kinds of distractions. So you never give your full attention to whatever is happening on television. So we may say that while we gaze at the movie screen, we glance at the TV screen. Okay, it can grab only a part of our attention, not our full attention. So this is one important difference. Now cinema is an image driven medium because the movie images are larger than life and uh, good quality images. So therefore the images are very powerful. So that's why cinema is an image driven medium and cinema has actually graduated, it has evolved from being silent. Okay, so in its early years, cinema learned to express itself completely uh, through visuals. Whereas television has evolved from radio. It is like a visible radio. So that is why television today is, uh, even today I am saying, television is an audio-driven medium. Even though it's an audio-visual medium, but it's, a, it's an audio-driven medium because the audio plays a more important role in television. Now television image cannot hold our attention for very long because the image is smaller in size and it is uh, uh, the image quality is not as good as cinema even though there is a lot of research going on to you know HD TV which is much better than SD TV that is standard definition TV that was there even five to seven years back okay so television is also trying to catch up with cinema but still it hasn't yet caught up with cinema so because the image quality is poorer so you cannot hold hold on to one single image uh, for too long so therefore the editing pattern has to uh, be uh, has to be adjusted accordingly so that there is a rapid uh, change in the images then the next thing is the world of cinema is self contained okay, what does it mean that the world of cinema is self contained when you go to a movie hall and the movie begins you get totally absorbed in the world of the cinema you know you forget about everything else around you and then at the end of the movie when the lights come on you know you come back to your own world with a kind of jerk and in those one and a half two or three hours that entire narrative gets completed it reaches uh, a certain conclusion and uh, it's a well-rounded complete narrative that is presented to you in the span of that screen time whatever that screen time be when you go to watch a movie so it's a self-contained world Whereas the world of cinema, world of television is an extension of our lived world. Because it is in our living room, whatever is happening all around us that we are seeing live on television. Okay, and it is like an, it's like a window to our world. All right, so therefore there is this element of that immediacy or liveness to television. Means whatever we are watching on television, we have the impression that we are watching it live. 
All right. Now there is a historical reason for that also, uh, and that is that. Uh, Television in its early years was actually live. Even the advertisements also used to come on live. And everything was live. Even, you know, quiz uh, contests, uh, drama, news, definitely. Everything was live, whatever uh, people watched on television. Then this recording technology was uh, developed and magnetic tapes, the technology of magnetic tapes was uh, perfected. And we started having pre-recorded programs. But still the audience, you know, it uh, remained at the back of the mind of the audience that television is live. And television people also kept up that illusion that whatever is coming on television, it as if it is live. Then the next thing that in a movie hall you are a passive voyeur. You are quietly prying into other people's lives. Whereas in television, in most of the programs, the participants are directly addressing the camera, the anchor is addressing the camera direct. So there is an eye contact between the viewer and the television person. The news reader is at, uh, looking at the camera and uh, saying the news. So there is this direct address which is not there in cinema. In cinema, nobody looks at the camera and speaks. And in television, the television anchors, presenters, etc., they are taught to look at the camera and speak. So television is a direct address medium. Then the, in terms of how cinema earns its revenue and how television earns its revenue, there also there is a big difference. That cinema earns its revenue through sale of tickets. Then of course selling satellite rights and uh, music rights, etc. Whereas television channels, they earn their revenue through advertisement. That means there is an attempt to uh, make the program very popular so that the ratings are high and higher the ratings, more are the chances of uh, getting advertisements and uh, more of, uh, the rates of advertisements are raised. If the ratings go higher, the advertisement rates are also raised and that's how the television channels make money. Let's come to image construction for television. Now, because the television screen is small, so it is, we, we play mainly with medium close-ups and close-ups. Now, too much use of long shot is not encouraged because then, you know, it's not impressive enough. Uh, it, do, it doesn't hold attention a long shot. Uh, on a television screen. And similarly, the composition has to be, it should not be cluttered with too many details because too many details again are likely to get lost in that small screen. All right, so the composition has to be minimalist. The image size has to be mainly medium close-ups, close-ups, maximum medium shots. The lighting has to be, there has to be ample light and uniform light. Then editing has to be faster because the image per se cannot hold your attention for too long. So the editing has to be faster. Things have to be happening on the screen all the time. And uh, the visuals have to be propped up by an audio track. You know, you do not have silent patches when you are watching television. Suddenly everything is going silent and it's an overpowering image. Everybody is looking at the image. That never happens on television. Something or the other is always there on the audio track. Either an explanatory note or the signature tune or some, uh, uh, so, uh, some sound effect to bring you back to, uh, the, to television. So that's why uh, we say that television is an audio driven medium. Now, television, anybody can switch on any time, okay? There is no guarantee that everybody will start from the beginning of the program, although that is desirable, but there is no guarantee, okay? So, in order to make sure that you don't lose your audience, so what the scriptwriters and the programmers, what they have to do is, they have to weave in these reinforcements and recaps into the body of the program. In terms of soaps and serials, who is whose uncle or who is whose cousin? If somebody tunes in, supposing somebody has has not seen a couple of episodes and then begins seeing from the third episode, he should not get lost. Okay, so in every episode, you know those relationships or whatever the key aspects of that particular serial, they have to be reinforced in some way or the other, yeah, either in a uh, recap in the beginning of the program, okay, or in in between through the dialogue 
dialogue, you remind the viewer that, okay, this is the relationship between them. Okay, so these reinforcements and recaps have to be woven in. So then narrative pattern has is simple and formulary. I mean, you cannot do too much experimentation on television. Television is a medium that follows strict conventions. Uh, it doesn't encourage experimentation. Okay, because people don't want to take risk. Understood? So, uh, because then once they lose the audience, it's gone. Then it will be very difficult to get back the audience. Okay, so that's why if it, there is, if they hit, hit a good formula, winning formula, they try to repeat it. They try to replicate that formula. No. So experimentation in TV is a bit rare then? Uh, experimentation is rare. And of, in but India? Uh, it's not that experimentation doesn't happen. Well, you are saying in India experimentation is mm -hmm. rare, but huh, Rosgere Ginni is, Roj Gere Gere is one pro uh, uh, program that is uh, basically of uh, Indian. One a Bengali gentleman came up with the concept and it was quite a hit. Okay, so he again understood that what television does to people, how television, how people relate to television, and he uh, devised the role a of the audience participating. Audience in it. participation. They felt huh? that it is more comfortable to them. Uh -huh. They felt like they are also part of the part show. Of, they the also show became a family. Here. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Okay, so it's not that experimentation doesn't happen in India, but then there are so many other hit serials that have already happened that they find the easy way out. Okay, we, we buy the franchise and we copy that. Okay, so that is the inclination of the producers. Anyway, and then program structure has to follow a set pattern. And then soaps and serials are ongoing sagas. You know, there isn't a closure. The closure comes very, very late after so many episodes. Ongoing saga, you are eager what will happen next week or what will happen the next day. So the closures are not there, all right? But at the same time, the narrative structure is fragmented. It is teeming with characters. There are lots of characters that are introduced and all those characters have their own personal trajectories, very complex stories, full of drama and full of coincidence and all that, okay? But the Telling is made simple by fragmenting it, it into smaller segments. So within one episode also you have these commercial breaks. Using commercial breaks you create fragments and each episode itself is a fragment. Okay, so like that, so using the, by fragmenting it, you actually simplify the uh, telling, the storytelling. Story story okay, telling. and um, these characters, because they come to your drawing room, appear in your drawing room, I wouldn't say come to your drawing room, appear in your drawing room every week or every day, so there is a familiarity that is generated. So much so, common person begins to believe that whatever that character is portraying is actually him. Yeah. You know, they become popular, they become stars by dint of the characters they portray. Yeah, their like screen person. Known, still known as and Tulsi. Still known as Tulsi, yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Okay, because day after day she appeared in every home as Tulsi. Yeah. So for everybody, she's Tulsi. She's still <laughs> Tulsi. And so, yeah. Now, this character, teaming with characters, I said, now what kind of character? So uh, that is something what kind of characters do you encounter in these soaps? Okay. Now normally the characters that you encounter are ambitious, highly indi individualistic and upwardly mobile. And nowadays of course upper class also, financially but it also. It does differ from regional to regional. For example in mm. the Hindi television soaps the characters are mostly dependent, sometimes dependent, individual, very mm -hmm. upper class, whereas in the Bengali series, they are medium class family or extremely upper class family. There is obviously a reason behind that because the television serials are uh, funded by uh, sponsors and the sponsors would like eventually their product to be sold. So obviously the, the sponsor are trying, sponsors are trying to target their buyer group mm -hmm. through these serials. Okay, if the, if the serial doesn't cater to their buyer group, then they are not interested in uh, sponsoring that serial. So that is why this all, always this thing for upper class is okay. there. Okay, and also very, very individualistic, ambitious. You know, you will not encounter somebody like Gandhiji or even Medha Patkar as the main protagonist in a, um, a television soap. 
okay somebody who has sparked a revolution who has mobilized people who is trying to bring about a social change such people are never uh, portrayed as heroes or role models uh, uh, through television soaps and serials because if you know, if there is a social change if the status quo is uh, disturbed then the uh, social elite who are sponsoring the television uh, serials their position will also become shaky so they want to consolidate their position in society so they want everybody to be a consumer okay so a hero will always wear branded uh, uh, you know glasses and branded clothes and shoes and will be upwardly mobile in the sense that ambitious to grow up the ladder of uh, society not somebody who is not interested in career more interested in serving the people so such people are not portrayed as uh, uh, icons to the uh, present generation through, through soaps and serials because if more of such people are there then these yeah. things will not get sold right. if people's lifestyle lifestyle changes then this entire consumerist pattern of society will uh, come crumbling down at, le it, at least in india even now television is a, is a family medium yeah. so therefore the soaps and serials are all very family oriented yeah. you see a family very family driven because the entire family watches uh, at dinner time or whatever time yeah. the family watches uh, the television together maybe it brings the family together also in a way okay so therefore they, those are very family driven now the story progresses more through dialogues than through pure action now there are two reasons for this one is television is an audio driven medium the second reason is that uh, because there is always this pressure of deadline you have to produce at least one program a week or so so there is no uh, chance of you know uh, action sequences shooting action sequences and going outdoor and doing an elaborate shoot okay so that's why it is all more mainly indoor and dialogue based then that's easier to shoot shooting gets over faster so that's why the story unfolds mainly through uh, dialogue. dialogue more through dialogue than through action and shooting is confined to limited locations okay so it may be a villa and the home or maybe just an outdoor park or a home something like that just two three locations you don't see too many locations in one particular episode and intertextuality is woven into the narrative which means that uh, not only you are referring to the earlier episodes but you are constantly referring to the other things that are happening uh, on television you know like other news and current affair things that are happening on television or uh, uh, any other famous advertisement very popular advertisement that is repeatedly coming on television there is always a cross reference of that and then a badly produced series is uh, stressed like rubber you know you what can be told in 5 minutes you take 15 minutes to say that uh, you just waste the time to just stretch the, the same the, shot is repeated again and again in edit ha uh, so like that again and again or something some other useless details are added which do not add to the narrative so like that it is infinitely stressed okay so it's it's an ongoing thing it goes on and on and on okay and the climax comes much later but within each episode there are a number of crisis points of crisis you know within each episode there are many points of crisis and mini uh, uh, resolution to those crisis also keep the viewers engaged uh, yeah to keep to keep the viewers engaged the role of television stars as you yourself said about tulsi that uh, television stars if movie stars belong to the starry firmament means you know they are larger than life and not unreachable by the common man television stars are much more down to earth okay and that you know that okay they are approachable maybe one day in some live show you may also go to the studio like amitabh bachchan also you can if you are part of kbc you might meet amitabh bachchan also <laughs> you know and share the same uh, sitting space with him so like that so uh, television stars are approachable but they become famous in their television persona and there are some movies like raghu romeo a hindi film raghu romeo where the main protagonist simply refused to believe that nita ji Uh, which uh, he saw in one particular serial is actually somebody called Reshma and not Nita ji at all. Okay, he took that lady to be Nita ji, and she cannot be anything other than Nita ji. Mera ghar, mera khana, mere kapde, aur mere samne to dekh dar rate ja raha hai Nita ji, Nita ji, Nita ji, Nita ji. Ruk, 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 
ऐसे पसलों की क्यों करना है तू? So these are some of the characteristics of uh, scripting for soaps, uh, soaps and serials. But the thing to be kept in mind is that when you are given a particular text uh, for uh, uh, to develop into uh, soap, say for example, Godfather. So Godfather, you have a film also. Godfather one, two, three. The yes. films you have a television series also. But when you adapt it to a tele for a television series, then you have to break it up like that. Ki you know, break up the narrative into these half hour slots or one hour slots like that. The first job will be to fragment the narrative into uh, into say twenty six parts or whatever they say. Then you calculate ki okay in the first episode who are the characters that I am introducing. Okay, you have to introduce a number of characters. It cannot be just two, three characters. You have to introduce a number of characters. So, who are the characters I am introducing? What are their personal crises in life? From where the various points of crisis, say critical situations, could develop. So, like that, you do that calculation first. Okay, and you say, okay, okay, this is the thing that is going to happen in this uh, episode one. These are the critical moments that will come in this episode. Then, from the one of those critical moments, will propel it to episode number two, and this is going to happen. So yes. that that calcul that flow chart kind of thing you first prepare, and then you start writing the script. And when you are writing, even that half an hour episode also, you have to put two commercial breaks, and those commercial breaks also have to come at the critical moment so that people. People are eager to see, you know, know more immediately after the commercial break. What's happening? They want cliffhanger things. Huh? Cliffhanger situation. Yeah, cliffhanger situation kind of thing. So you have to inject a crisis quite often into yeah. into the narrative when you are scripting for soaps. I think if you are stretching out a movie into a TV serial, hmm. every character inside a TV serial should be explained completely because you are hmm. taking so much time yeah. to show the story. So mm. every character should be explained why they are doing mm -hmm. what their background is and everything yeah. else. So it is also required. I But guess. Uh, uh, right. seeing that the character traits, okay, yeah. generally uh, for what happens that if you are saying that when you actually to detailly explain before, yes. but sometimes say that we discover some new traits again and again in television shows, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. something mm -hmm. which was not there suddenly it came up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that one, that particular cat you had earlier never seen her doing, you know, going to dance parties. Suddenly yeah. she started She's going done. to like that. Just yes. for the sake of making it into a TV series, huh. inserting yeah. these characters. Yeah, exactly. That happens. Uh, also, by the way, the, this uh, structure that you said mm -hmm. that following the. Uh, Uh, dividing the episodes into 26 in our episode deciding mm -hmm. each of the episodes plan and planning them according to the plots mm -hmm. and developing the character introducing the character i don't does it really happen in indian television soaps or Yeah. Mostly in international soaps. No, right? no. At least the first twenty-six episodes you can plan out. After that, maybe as the show goes on, you keep innovating and you keep writing. But at least the first twenty-six episodes you have to. There, there is an ample scope for planning. Foreign serials. These are all available on the net. Have you, uh, tr have you been tracking any of these foreign serials? Few of them. Very few of them. Which one? Tell me. Uh, mm. Recently, I was seeing Dexter long time back. Acha. Mm. Then CSI. Breaking Bad. <laughs> breaking Bad. Not Breaking Bad. Let's see. Mm -hmm. uh, I am interested in watching Game of Thrones, but Game of Thrones. but till now I didn't get time to watch uh. Game of Thrones. So now that your exams are over, mm. I suggest you watch this Game of Thrones and see because there they spend a lot of money. I am. When uh, each episode I'm they uh, spend. I am following money. Vikings on History Channel presently. Acha, uh, acha. Uh, okay. That's quite. Good yeah, yeah. Vikings. Exactly. The production value of any of these international TV serials mm. are much, yeah, much yeah. more than mm. we have. And that that is what Yashraj Films is actually trying to achieve, that they take the television production standard also to an international. Yeah, because level. ultra HD TVs are now available mm. to everyone. Mm, yeah. So anyway, yes. it has been an interesting discussion and a recommendation to viewers that uh, you also catch up with some of the uh, contemporary foreign television. Uh, Uh, series that are available on the internet, and then we can have later on. We can or we can have an online discussion on that. So thank you very much. Thank you, students. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am.